Fendi, I wonder if we could start off with talking about how the uh, pandemic has affected Touch and Go. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it, it's quite straightforward. I mean, if you think about our businesses, our businesses are essentially divided into two main bulks, right? The first business, of course, is the business of transportation, tolling, transit, um, and parking. And the second part of the business, of course, uh, is our e-wallet business uh, that is essentially uh, the newer part of the business. Uh, so, you know, the MCO and, of course, COVID-19 has affected a whole ton of businesses and we are affected the same way. I mean, obviously, with movement control orders, movement in general is very, very much curtailed, right? So, obviously, in terms of traffic volumes, in terms of parking volumes, and certainly in terms of transit, uh, usage has, of course, uh, tapered down uh, across the board, right? Um, and I think that, you know, it is something that we, we have grown to, to live with, per se, uh, over the last 12 months. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and it's something that we have to continue to, to, to continue to be used to. Yeah. And the second part of the business, of course, is the e-wallet business. And that business obviously has seen a huge pickup in terms of online usage right. uh, and certainly a huge pickup in terms of cashless usage, uh, especially as people go uh, more and more conservative, conservative, shall I say, on cash uh, and general handling, right? Mm -hmm. So all in all, I guess businesses are affected, uh, some parts negatively, some parts positively, uh, but really the adaptation to the change is the most important portion uh, where organizations have to go through. Did you ever foresee um, the sort of balance tipping towards e-wallets prior to, to COVID? Was that ever on to the yeah. trajectory of where it was going? Yeah, I think I mean credit to 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 the central bank, uh, Bank Negara, and certainly all the other financial authorities in this country. Uh, they have over the period of the last few years encouraged uh, a lot of cashless transactions. Uh, so I think that in terms of tipping, I think the tipping was already happening, but in terms of acceleration and right. this pandemic being a catalyst towards electronic monies, uh, I think we've certainly seen evidence of that. In in sort of. Um in general, uh, from your point of view, in general, um, this yeah. pandemic and its effect um, throughout the sort of MCO, CMCO, RMCO, any other variant that comes along after that. Um, <laughs> what other areas do you think um, one might sort of see an accelerated or massive ramp up in terms of growth? Yeah, I think that you will see, um, I think you will see uh, habits changing, right? I think that you will see growth other than our industries itself. I think you will see growth in automation uh, in general across industries. I mean, if you think about what we're doing today, Asha, uh, doing this over video and doing this yeah. uh, over electronic transmission, right? I mean, yeah. usually on normal cases, I'll probably be in the studio in front of you. Right? Yes. Yeah. So I think, I think many, many areas in terms of enablement uh, yeah. or electronic enablement of delivering services and day-to-day -day life, I think that will certainly see a pickup. Mm. Uh, the other area that I think uh, we'll see quite a lot of pickup uh, other than automation is things that surround uh, the ecosystem that we have to operate in today, right? Like, for example, uh, in the office, we're thinking about how to design offices so that people are more ergonomic, better spaced. Um, you know, mm. this requires change in terms of stacking and layouts. Mm. Uh, it requires change in terms of deployment of new technology. Uh, and also requires change in terms of human resources, right? Like, for example, how we cater to the new world uh, in terms of what employees would like and wouldn't. So right. does it make sense to swap car allowances for broadband allowances instead? So I think yeah. that areas that are related to this ecosystem uh, will continue to see quite a lot of growth. How has it affected you personally, though? Mm. I mean, this pandemic. Wow. You know, I, you know, to be frank, I am fortunate because I can come still uh, to the office as part of essential services and financial services. But right. personally, um, I am one person who's generally quite, I, I like to spend the evenings walking around, talking to my staff uh, and catching up with a lot of things that are not about work, right? And I think this MCO has certainly uh, uh, ensured that I can't do much of that. So personally, I've had right. to adapt uh, to a slightly different management style. Right. Um, at home, you know, I, I get to see the kids a lot more. I mean, that, I mean, that's a good yeah, thing, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's a great thing because, you know, sometimes you're on conference call and, and you get the odd six-year-old popping his head in with his front teeth missing, right? And, yeah. and I guess it's a lot of fun. Uh, and I guess people have become more accepting of it. Um, but personally, really, um, I think that certainly some behavioral changes at work, a little bit more bonding time with the family at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, personally, I've actually gotten back to running again. 
Uh, oh, I, ha- I had not run for like 10 years and, and, and about six months ago, I just said, you know what, why not, right? It is yeah. half an hour, half an hour well used. So yeah, some changes. It's a good thing. It means the company gets a fitter CEO. Yeah. Basically. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I think if you ask a lot of people, they'll tell you it's about time. <laughs> you know? but, 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 but yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully that comes through uh, over a period of time. So here's the question, sort of like you were talking about HR and sort of the different uh, ways we now need to sort of manage um, the environment and people in terms of what they want. What's your magic wand scenario after you've sort of had this um, rapidly sort of different uh, scenario yourself and having to sort of work through it and the jogging and stuff? Would you opt to have, um, you know, the chance to be able to work from home X amount of, of, of days or half of the day and still keep up your running like have you made that promise to yourself? Yeah, well, you know, I haven't I haven't actually made that promise to myself, but what I made a promise to do is to evolve with the times, right? Okay. I think that, you know, for, for some of us who've worked a, a very long time, you have a few habits that are set in stone, mm-hmm. right? And I think that unless and until you're willing to say that it's a new world and you have to evolve with it, I think you're going to find yourself hitting a glass ceiling pretty fast, right? Yeah. For example, like some functions where I have, naturally thought that they must always be in the office and do it that way, uh, I certainly have had to, to, to change those mindsets. Uh, and, you know, sometimes there are optimizations, uh, Asha. I mean, you know, the reality of the situation is if you take uh, the analogy of a fisherman, mm-hmm. and a fisherman just likes to go out and fish, yeah. right? right? He fishes and sometimes his boat leaks a little bit, his nets are a little bit torn, but he goes out and fish anyway because there are lots of fish to catch. Uh, but in the monsoon, in order to be a good fisherman, you need to mend your boats and mend your nets. Right. And I think in, in this area, this, this time that we are operating in, uh, one way to think about it is it's a monsoon, right? The businesses will come back. So take that opportunity to toughen up the control functions within your business, things that you wouldn't have naturally done. So that's one, one area that I certainly uh, take, take, take a very serious note on. And the second area, of course, is to make sure that you are ready for when the monsoon goes away. And I think that in this world, I mean, God, hand sanitizer makers are, are going gangbusters <laughs> here, right? Yeah. Glove, uh, glove, mask, whatever you call it, right? But yeah. you also have to make sure that you're ready for it. And for us, there is a silver lining, right? The silver lining for corporates is the reality of it is you will need a lot less space. Yes. But yes. Uh, and, and you know that that can, can translate into certain elements of cost savings on the PL. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you need to make sure that the benefits that you accrue to or, 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 or accord to your staff are slightly different. So I think there are many, many ways. Um, and, and, and I do think, though, that in, in managing through this period and certainly in trying to continue to build a sustainable business through this period, adaptation is the way to go uh, and evolution is. So I, I encourage uh, my staff and certainly my management to be uh, compassionate, right? To, to be mindful of what their staff are now going through. They may need to be at home more plainly because schools are shut, right? Mm-hmm. They may need to, you know, um, uh, allocate more time to help their parents run errands. So in businesses, uh, we just have to adapt a bit and, and we, we, we have to go with the times. Mm. I love your analogy about the fisherman. I think that makes yeah. it for the lay person like me who's not business minded at all. Um, actually have something translatable even from my own personal life you know so uh, thank you for that I'm going to use that and steal it and pretend it's mine yeah Yeah. (laughs) okay going back more or sort of business centric uh, question here even for touch and go um, it was an important move uh, to going from traditional toll payment uh, to prepaid card to now an e-wallet way back when when was it that this decision was sort of made and what were the factors that drove this decision um, to actually happen in the first place? Yeah, good question. So I think that, you know, if you took look, look at Touch and Go as a company, mm-hmm. I mean, the company was started all the way back in 1997, right? And, and really the company was, 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 was set up to help the expressway concessionaires collect uh, tolling in an electronic fashion. So if you ask me, uh, Touch and Go is arguably Malaysia's very first fintech. Um, yeah, technically, oh, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. If, if, yeah. If, nice. If you look at it, if you look yeah. at it that way, it is a reality, right? And then when it came to about you know 2015 uh, or thereabouts, mm-hmm. we said that cool, we've been doing great in these areas, uh, but really we needed uh, to find a new avenue for growth, right? And a new avenue for growth at that time was in the area of retail payments, 
uh, retail payments through e-wallets, right? Uh, and there were big brands like Alipay and WeChat Pay, etc., who had done a lot uh, with this uh, in North Asia. So as a company, uh, in about 2015, uh, we, we, we went through some strategic thinking. One is we knew we had to go to retail payments because we had a natural base for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had uh, a few strategic choices to make. One is do it ourselves, uh, which we didn't believe uh, we would do because you know many, many players were way ahead already. Second is not do it at all. We couldn't take that option either because you'd give up a huge option value in terms of not monetizing your user base. Mm-hmm. And the third area is, uh, I call it partnering ourselves out of trouble, right? <laughs> uh, so we went with option three, uh, which I think was a, a, a well-played option. Um, we went into the partnership with the N Financial Group, uh, the owners of Alipay. Uh, the thesis of that joint venture uh, was to use the very l- large uh, uh, toll and user base of touch and go mm-hmm. combine it with the technical expertise and e-wallet intelligence of running a business of end and creating a joint venture uh, that is today the touch and go e-wallet uh, right. so three years since the business started I, our thesis uh, continues to feel i feel our thesis continues to remain strong uh, we've been able to get the right traction in market uh, and today we're the largest e-wallet in the country um, mm-hmm. So I, I, I think that if you ask me from an evolution perspective, it mm-hmm. is about making sure uh, that we are able to evolve an older business uh, and continue to do that business well, but have the element of growth within that business uh, in the new world, right? So that was essentially how we evolved uh, as a company. I love the fact that sort of this uh, staying adaptive is is sort of a, a current theme that sort of runs through through mm. everything you're saying and it's just so relevant to constantly everybody pivot, else right? yeah, yeah constantly yeah, yeah. so yeah. okay talking about sort of e-wallets and stuff and cashless payments and you know they are <laughs> absolutely so relevant phone. right yeah um i i was very late to the party i have to say it took this mco for me to go how on earth do i need to pay i think i did my first whatever transfer to a mobile phone for the first time and right. i literally was panicking <laughs> like a whole day wondering whether the person actually got the money. Can you check your bank account? Because you know, I couldn't fathom that you could send right. money to an IC number. Of, so yeah. I'm late to the party on this. So you, you forgive me on being silly. But uh, going back to how relevant they are, you know, everyone's sort of trying to keep contact to a minimum. So therefore, it's even more relevant at this particular time. Um, yeah. There are so many players in the e-wallet market. So yeah. how does Touch and Go e-wallet set itself apart from the rest or, or what's different? Yeah, I think that, you know, the, the theme in this business, so that there are two ways I'm going to answer this question, right? So what do we think that the steady state of the business is going to be, right? So the steady state of the business is going to be that thematically, for a size of the Malaysian market, I think there will be a two or a maximum of three winners in this space. Uh, the way the industry is designed is it's a winner-takes-all industry. So you will find that you won't have 10, 12 or 14 players uh, right. operating at scale, right? And then you think about how do you become one of the two or three players, right? And there are a few things uh, around, uh, uh, around uh, deciding that. One is, of course, uh, the resource and capability to continue to support a startup business uh, that, is, that is expensive, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's one in terms of commitment, uh, really having the right shareholders, uh, really having the right board, and really having the right financial resources to make sure that financial inclusion is continuously implemented. I think that's one uh, area that will determine success. Right. The second area that will determine success uh, is sticky use cases and the ability to continue to have very sticky use cases on your wallet. Uh, Asha, you okay, I... You know, you're evoking images of a child with sort of like chocolate covered fingers there. Can you explain what a sticky use? I mean, it sounds almost dirty. <laughs> What's a sticky no, I use think, case? Yeah, I think sticky use cases are things that, that people come to use your wallet for on a daily basis. So it's not, they don't come once, use it, go away and never oh, use it again. Oh, I get but it. things that people it come back. Onto you, yeah. So it's like something you'd use every single day or like, you yeah. know, like, you yeah. know, you grocery shop whenever you, like that's your go-to as yeah. opposed to your wallet, you go to yeah. your phone, All right? Yeah, so you go to your phone, like today, yeah. like if you look at our applications, uh, things that are very sticky, they're not related to children, Asha, but things are very sticky. <laughs> right. uh, are things like people have started uh, linking uh, their cards to the e-wallet. People have to link their RFID tags to the e-wallet, right? Mm. So more and more so, that adoption is is picking up, and we continue to expand uh, the link between our traditional use cases 
uh, to be operated through the e-wallet. For example, today, if you go to uh, grocery stores, right, and this is a big pivot that we did uh, in April, which is mm. to make, make the conscious effort uh, to ensure that we are very present and very dominant in the grocery and convenience store area, uh, the ability for you to transact using your e-wallet is there, right? And the third part of really ensuring uh, you win, for me, I'm of the view, and I always tell my managers this, is that when you design products, you must design products that are very high in value, right? Not just in terms of what the user can use it or where he can use it at, but what are the value, what value drivers that are being driven through uh, your innovation, right? So we're doing quite a lot of that. Uh, we're making sure, for example, in 2021, which is this year, you will start seeing uh, yourself being able to access financial services uh, modules through the e-wallet. Right? Oh, that's a unit trusting uh, that I read about the recognized market. That's right. Okay, can you explain yeah. that in layman's terms for people like me and everybody yeah, so, else listening? <laughs> yeah, so I think that we haven't launched a product yet, but 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 we did announce that we have already uh, obtained some conditional approvals from the regulators to do it, mm -hmm. uh, whereby the ability to access basic investment products through the e-wallet will come through and you will be able to access it uh, from very low starting points, right? Our first product that will go out and we have slated to launch that at the end of the first quarter here, uh, we'll see uh, Malaysians or touch and go e-wallet users being able to access uh, basic investment products for as low as 10 ringgit, right? And, and I think that, that there are a lot of benefits towards this. Um, we certainly still, if you look at market demography, uh, Malaysians are, are very good. If you look at ASEAN numbers, we have one of the highest savings rates uh, in, in the really? region. Really? Yes, we do. We ah, do. interesting. Right? Malaysians do, yeah. And, and the ability for us to create more product options for them to access investment products better, uh, we hope, uh, will become uh, more the norm, right? Um, so I think that, that there are many, many of these uh, that we will come out with. Uh, we feel that profits are not everything. Mm -hmm. We feel that in delivering value, profits will come. Uh, and, and so that is the way uh, we want to go ahead and design our products and services going forward. Uh, and you can't do this yourself, right? We offer these products in partnership with asset management partners, banking partners. Um, the concept, I, I spend, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've been, I spent uh, the last 17 years of my life at CIMB, right? Yeah. And, and really, if you look at large banks, large banks always think that we can do a lot of things ourselves, right? I guess, and, and they can still do it now because of the size. But if you look at new economy businesses, new economy businesses are, are engaged and are anchored on sharing, right? And it's right, about yeah. sharing and working together and building partnerships and really putting the best of many worlds mm -hmm. together uh, to ensure that the product delivered is core and key. So like Video Killed the Radio Star, does this mean that, you know, e-wallet and, and all and this sort of side of things is going to kill the traditional bank in the next few no. years? No, Make I don't redundant. believe so. Okay. No, I don't, I don't believe so at all. I okay. think banks have their niche space. Banks will continue to operate as very systemically important institutions. Okay. Um, I think that, you know, in the past... Certainly, if you if you attend many fintech conferences over the last three years, four years, five years, mm. many of them talk about, oh, we're going to come and eat the bank's lunch and we're going to put the banks out of business. I personally don't believe so. I feel that banking institutions are extremely stable. However, instead of competing, I think there's going to be a lot of collaboration. Yeah, so I think that, that the, at the end of the day, the consumer will win. I think that there's enough space for e-wallets and payments companies to operate alongside banks. I feel banks will continue and will always be systemically important. Uh, and I think that it's just a new avenue uh, as user behavior evolves. Okay, awesome. So a little while back, you were talking about sort of the initiatives and the changes that you were doing. Could you tell us about some of the things that Touch and Go eWallet um, have done to help SMEs stay afloat and thrive during the pandemic? You know, your sort yeah. of loyalty programs, cashback, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've done a few things. Uh, one is, of course, we have uh, uh, individual initiatives uh, to encourage uh, people to have an opportunity 
uh, and platform to do business. We did some of that uh, very early on uh, in the MCO. Uh, today, aside from us just offering services to users, we're actually starting to offer services more and more to micro businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are two elements in which we do it. I think if you are a touch and go e-wallet user, uh, you will find that in more and more times that places now you can pay uh, using your e-wallet uh, in chakwetel shops or your nasikanda shops yeah. uh, that that basically helps the supply chain uh, cash in transit is always very expensive uh, micro businesses don't pay very much attention to it because of their cash supply chain uh, but more and more so as people stray away from cash uh, we are making sure that those areas are terminalized and are able to accept payments the second area which we are more and more going into now is to provide an avenue in a very simple way for businesses to onboard themselves to be able to activate and receive payments on the touch and go e wallet uh, those are self onboarding modules that we have uh, mm -hmm. and the third initiatives for smes and certainly businesses in general is to be able to have them come on board uh, to the touch and go e wallet and from there access our ecosystem and do businesses make things so, simpler for people to just get onto the yeah. system absolutely and this access that means for us, the consumers, it's easier for us to pay them as well. So this just, just starts with getting better, I see. It's, it's interesting that the, the changes that are happening now for all of this to be offered to businesses so quickly um, because of the pandemic um, has been, I think, for, for people that I know, incredibly powerful because they weren't necessarily like me, business minded. When you don't have to worry about that sort of thing and there are systems and platforms and things you can can partner up with to, to do it for you or have yeah. it done for you. Yeah. you know, the sky's the limit, really. Yeah, because I mean, if you're a small business owner, you're going, well, very my fun. I don't know how to do it. I'd rather not do it. But if you make yeah. it very simple, yeah. like you guys have yes. done. yes. And, and I think that the way, um, you know, the other thing with regards to, to, to just payments and financial services mm -hmm. is the concept and the way that products are now designed are being very different, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you know, it always, the, in the past, in product design, it always starts with the organization and what it wants. Yes. But today, great product designers are starting with the customer. And, and really saying that the wireframe in terms of user experience becomes important. So... So I think that, you know, not just this pandemic per se, but mm. in general, when you start thinking about delivering value into the end user, you will find uh, that your, your, your mindset around how you think about doing business change, right? And, and you have to go with it. That's uh, strangely sort of, but nicely put. It, it forces you to become organic and kind of adaptive. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does. I, I mean, if you look at, if you look at, just another thing in terms of just my own personal interest, right? Mm -hmm. You think about product design, and I was listening to the CEO of Microsoft a few years ago, right? And he said that today, most people design products for people who are perfect, right? So if you have a computer or if you have a product, you're designing it for someone who is who is able-bodied and able-minded, like, yeah. like some of us who sit here. Yeah. But he said, you know, if you do that, you're actually leaving out a whole big portion of customers, yeah. people who are less fortunate, maybe with some disability or with some learning issues or people who are colorblind. Yeah. And if you start thinking about product design in, in a way like that, you will be able to create much better businesses and serve many, many other people. Yeah, why limit I your, your think, market, right? Yeah, I don't think that, that I hope to be able to see it in, in my generation and time in corporate, mm -hmm. but I think for generations to come, that will, be become, the, that will become the norm. Gosh, it's um, the first time in, in a while and the future's been kind of exciting to think about, yeah. actually, you having said that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow, thanks for that. Yeah. Okay, no so while we're on a roll here, um, you know, speaking of people who perhaps are a little stuck in terms of their sort of more traditional, or even if it's, it's not such a traditional business, but it's unable to, to work right now, are hoping that they will be able to have it up and running or work better um, once things get sort of safer. And I wonder if you could share a couple of things here. In your experience, why is it important for businesses to change, especially like today um, in the face of adversities, but on a whim, like on a moment's notice, why is it so important for them to be able to do that, to be able to change and, and sort of explain a little bit about your perception of what pivoting or changing is, because it does mean different things to different people. And the second part of that would be sort of the advice you'd give to business owners who are struggling in this time, who actually do need to do this thing called pivot or change and still have yet to do so. 
Yeah, I, I think for me, I'll answer the question, but I want to qualify it with first me not being on a moral high horse. And a lot of this is easier said than done. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's the reality of it. And I think we all understand all that. Mm. Um, I, I think that the in terms of a very simple way uh, of putting this, I think there is no more important a time to be able to learn, right? Mm. I think that I think that first and foremost. Uh, businesses and business owners, especially the smaller businesses, will have to learn and double down on understanding what is going on in the world in their space, right? Uh, you know, I'm going to give a plug here to my competitor, right? I think it's brilliant what Grab has done uh, for for food, for food delivery, right? Mm. And they were able to then, you know, step in and provide an avenue uh, for these people to continue to do business, albeit at lower margins to the food to the food for the person who's selling food. Uh, but I think that for that business owner today, the ability to go onto that platform and to be able to continue to do business and to be able to use the terminals and figure out the difference in how they have to operate uh, to do that really is very, very important. So I think that just like how they've learned about that, I think there are many other things they have to learn about, you know, different kinds of sourcing, different ways of doing logistics, how do we can we create a new business without as many staff, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I think that first and foremost, the, the concept of learning uh, becomes very, very important. Secondly is I would say that the way of thinking this is I do not believe that this pandemic is going to be here forever, right? This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. The monsoon will go. But I think one advice that I would like to give is not just to think about the business today, right? Mm. But to think about what you're implementing today could potentially also be very good for tomorrow. And I can tell you that I can relate that to this business, our business at Touch & Go, right? For example, that the, 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 the concept that I told you about just now about needing a lot less space. I don't think that we're going to ever need the amount of space that we have today because people are just working differently. Uh, and, and you have to adjust with that in terms of changing, right? So I, I would say that the concept of learning is extremely important. Mm -hmm. The concept of not fearing what you don't know is extremely important. Yeah. Uh, and, and the concept of really making sure that whatever the things that you're doing today is also beneficial for your business tomorrow becomes really important, right? So that is how I would I would think about it. Um, you know, pivoting and the concept of pivoting is difficult to do in mm -hmm. general. Uh, but I think that you will be left with no choice and you will have to pivot uh, in one way or another. Like the, the CEOs of entertainment companies where it's all about getting as many uh, bumps on seats, I suppose mm. we're going to put it in like cinemas Cartoons, and whatnot yeah. or events. Mm. Yeah. How do they pivot in such a yeah. tough market? Yeah, that's a tough one, you know. That's a tough one. If, if, you, if, you, think about, if you think about companies like Disney, Mm. And companies like and, and them starting off companies like Disney Plus. Yeah. Right. For example, Disney Plus and all these other guys have done so well, right? Over the last few years, uh, over the last year at least. Mm. Uh, no releases in the box office, right? And you can, you know, if you own Star Wars and the next version of Star Wars is up on Disney Plus, all of a sudden you have a revenue chain. Yeah. Um, so however difficult it is, uh, we have to pivot. But coming back, um, to, to your question and, and your reference towards possibly cinemas and stuff like that, um, I, I, it's a hard question to answer. I, I do think that they have to go back into the core fundamentals uh, and look at what are the marginal drivers of the business and what can be kept and what cannot be kept, right? Mm -hmm. um, I do not think that people will as freely want to go to places that people gather. And, and also, you know, this extends, uh, it extends to even like sports arenas, right? stadiums etc etc um I, I do think that these things were we will see an evolution of it um mm -hmm. you know it's quite interesting how the premier league is still running yes. uh, but obviously but obviously the revenues there are so anchored on tv right yes exactly <laughs> so, yeah. so that stuff goes on uh yeah. you know the gate receipts will drop but it's still net net a win uh, so some businesses will still make money but they will make less mm. uh and they will have to innovate to 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 to, to top up the revenues or go extinct. Well, yeah. yeah. One more thing, though, if you don't mind me asking, because with sure. a lot of companies having to pivot, that means a lot of them, because you mentioned some of them would have, uh, staff would have to work from home. What about 
um, reducing the number of staff. Is that something that maybe Touch and Go had to consider as well at some point because of the MCO and because of how tough business was? Yeah, for us, I think it is an area that we constantly look at, which is optimization and rationalization. So, but I can tell you right now that we are not looking to reduce any number of staff, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but we are looking uh, as a group to make sure that staff are equipped with skills that are needed to advance themselves in the new world, right? So, for example, one area that we continue to, to that, that, that I just had a discussion last week with my head of HR, is we continue to go on with some uh, commitments that we've made towards training, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've changed some areas of what the staff are being trained on, but we're still continuing to train them. So from a, fortunately, uh, we are able to sustain uh, our people. Uh, we haven't had to do any drastic options. Uh, but the thing is, making sure that they are ready for the new world is important for the company. Right. Keeping your people on the boat, learning how to patch the boat up. Yeah, but it's tough because yeah. not all CEOs get to do that because some yeah. have to make the tough oh, yeah. decision to... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and these are times that we'll see, and you will see more and more of that. Right? I mean, if you think about even many industries around us, uh, you know, the areas of travel and tourism are hit very, very hard. Yeah. And I really do not. Uh, I, and I think that the, the chief executives who've had to make those decisions uh, yeah. will have to do it. And, you know, I'm sure they will come back stronger. That's great. Well, thank you so much. That was a really insightful conversation. You Fendi. learned a lot. I learned a hell of a lot. <laughs> Gina, can I just say, I still have in my car a broken fat, uh, smart tag thingy All with right. my touch and go my battery's always falling out and stuff and so the first time I, I even you know as I said MCOs when I started going oh I can bank on my phone what is this <laughs> <laughs> I was still stopping at the window going <laughs> and they were like no, don't I'm one of those guys who I was on the RFID uh, I don't even know what that looks like so there was an RFID sort of like kiosk um, at yeah. the shopping mall where, where I live uh, just before MCO broke down I was like going what is that? Is that some kind of car wash? <laughs> yeah. It's a little stickier thing. That you... I should I should get I should get one to you, Asha. But I wouldn't even know how to use it. It's just putting we'll, it on your we'll, car and then we'll, just... Yeah, we'll sort you out. We'll give you a step by step, send someone there to register you, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You know what? We could we'll do a do we could do a story and I could show you my smart tag that I've yeah. had like I think since it came out. Like that must be the first edition of that big bulky fat one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, you know what, Jeff we'll, we'll do a video of of uh, Asha getting uh, hooked up with that with the RFID maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should do that. I'll send someone to get it. Done. I mean, okay. it, it, it's good. Asha, you should try it, right? And um, you know, it's it's people who've used it. The feedback that I've given getting right. is good. I mean, obviously, it's it's a fairly new product in the market, right? Right. Uh, but we've got it to quite good efficiency levels, so we want to make sure we. To be it. honest with you, I'm so used to because I'm also you know you can't. I couldn't touch up at the tolls anymore. And I couldn't figure out where to go to get it touched up. No, right? no, the, the e wallet you can. Hook I up didn't the... know how to. Look, I'm you know my brain. Right, I'm a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. on the spectrum, yeah. right? So these things just don't come into yeah. my mind, and so I'm used to go stunning back at, at toll stations. Oh, no, you know, I'm trying the... to get to the other. Now you can hook up the three cards if I'm not mistaken. The e yeah, yeah, you can, you can, you can register your cards to it up to three okay. or five. Three cards, wow. I think. I have no shame about being a dinosaur, but it's right. been a fantastic chat with you, Fendi. Thank you yeah. so much.